Okay. So uh, we're going to remember to consider this food chain. And so keep that in mind while we construct our little uh, food chain on our uh, page three. So here's what I'm going to do is you guys can do it out to the side because your paper's formatted a little bit differently than mine. But the lowest trophic level, I'll put one, go back to the description of the food chain, phytoplankton, okay, remember phytoplankton, our producers, that's always going to be our lowest level, our lowest trophic level, lowest level on the energy pyramid. Phytoplankton, it says, are eaten by copepods. That's going to be our next trophic level. Copepods are then eaten by herring. And then it says that herring is eaten by mackerel. Mackerel gets eaten by the swordfish. And the swordfish gets eaten by humans. Okay, so there's our simple food chain that they described. Phytoplankton is at the bottom, uh, lowest trophic level, and humans are up at the top. So, which of the following sequences lists the trophic level from first um, or lowest to sixth or highest? And the only thing that lists them in order from lowest to highest, going from phytoplankton to copepods to herring, mackerel, swordfish, and human, that would be choice C. So make sure you highlight C. Okay. Number eight, which of the following organisms is or are Autotrophs. Remember that autotrophs make their own food. Okay. Autotrophs in a terrestrial ecosystem are plants. Autotrophs in a marine ecosystem are phytoplankton. So the autotrophs here, you should select phytoplankton. Which of the following are herbivores? Well, remember that herbivores eat your producers. Okay. Um, remember that your producer in a marine ecosystem, in this case, is phytoplankton. So what eats the phytoplankton directly? The herbivore. In this case, that's going to be the copepod. And then which of the following organisms are or is um, carnivores? Well, we've already said that copepods are your herbivores. And we've already said that phytoplankton is your autotroph or your producer. Herring eats copepods, okay, so hunts and eats copepods. Mackerel eats herring, swordfish eats mackerel, humans eat swordfish. So the herring, the humans, the mackerel, and the swordfish are all carnivores. The direction in which biomass and energy flow within this food chain is from organisms feeding at the what to what? Well, remember you start at the lowest and you go up to the highest, okay? So you're going to go from lowest to highest trophic levels, okay? That's number 11. Okay, for number 12, um, we're not going to rename our six trophic levels, but I do want us to number them over here again, okay? So just put one, two, three, four, five, six, one at the bottom, six at the top. All right, number 12 says, assume an ecological efficiency of 10% in the simple food chain that was described. What food chain are they talking about? They're talking about the one we just drew, okay? Um, with a supply of 10,000 metric tons of phytoplankton, the maximum number or maximum possible biomass at the fourth trophic level. Okay, so let's do a little math before we figure that out. Um, if there are 10,000 metric tons available at the bottom, lowest trophic level, and you only can carry 10% to the next trophic level, well, 10% of 10,000, that's pretty easy, that's 1,000. And only 10% can go to the next trophic level, so that's 100. 
and only 10% of that can go to the next trophic level. Okay? And just to prove that you're still listening, 10% um, of 10 is going to give you trophic level number 5, and trophic level number 5 is only 1 metric ton, and trophic level number 6 is only 0 0.1 metric tons. So make sure that you write um, the number of metric tons for both 5 and 6. And then come down here and select your answer. It says fourth trophic level would be about how many metric tons. Okay, so look over here. In coastal upwelling zones, the ecological efficiency is somewhat higher than the average value for the ocean. Assuming um, an ecological efficiency of 15% in a coastal upwelling zone, um, let's so so it says assume 15% rather than 10. If the phytoplankton biomass is 200,000 kilograms, the maximum possible biomass at the seventh trophic level is going to be what? Okay, so this is kind of a little math problem, um, but it's done the same way that we just did uh, number 12. So it asks about the seventh trophic level. So over here, out where I have a little bit of room, um, I'm going to do my trophic levels. One, two, three, four, I've got to go all the way up to seven. Why do I have to go up to seven? Because they're asking me about the seventh trophic level. Okay. Now it says that you start off with 200,000 kilograms of um, phytoplankton at the bottom. Now it says that the ecological efficiency this time is 15%, not 10%. So here's what we're going to do. We're going to say 200,000 times 0.15 to give us what 15% 15, 15 is. So that's 30,000. Okay, so 15% of trophic level 1 biomass and energy winds up in trophic level 2. 15% of that 30,000 is going to give us trophic level 3, which is 4,500. Fifteen percent of that is going to give us trophic level number 4. Do you see that there's less and less food and energy available as you go up in trophic levels? 15% of that one is going to give us 101.25. 15% of that is 15.18. And then 15% of that one. And you wind up at 2.278. And I could keep going, but they asked about seven trophic levels. Okay. So out of the 200,000 kilograms that you start with at trophic level number one, when it's phytoplankton, how much of that is available at the seventh trophic level? Well, here's where we did all the math. So select your answer, and then that actually is going to conclude it for the first section of Investigation 10A, and that's what we did together in class um, if you missed it.